Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean thriller movie released in 2017, called, Memoir of a Murderer. A former serial killer who has Alzheimer's disease must protect his memories in order to save his daughter from another serial killer. Can he fight against his disease? The story starts with byung Soo, a confused elderly in a police station. He seems to be spaced out and can't answer a simple question asked by the police. Not long after that, his daughter, Uni, came to get him. As they eat at a restaurant, she gives him a voice recorder to record important details so he doesn't get lost anymore. byung Soo doesn't like the idea at first because he already has a memoir that he writes routinely, but he accepts to make her daughter happy. It turns out that byung Soo was diagnosed with dementia three months ago. His recent memories will flicker like traffic lights, and all memories will fade in time. It can't be stopped and most likely will develop into Alzheimer's. The doctor says the car accident 17 years ago that forced him to get brain surgery is the main reason. Back at home, he lives with his only daughter, Uni. The news on the TV covers a recently found dead body of a young lady inside luggage found in a mudflat area nearby. Hearing it, byung Soo looks confused and runs to see his favorite white shoes. It might be his Alzheimer's kicking, but he is relieved after seeing the shoes for some reason. At night, Uni is about to go to her friend's birthday party. byung Soo tells her not to go because of the recent event. But Uni tells him not to worry because killing is not that common, then heads out. But byung Soo knows well that murder is not that rare. He goes back to his memoir and writes all things that he still remembers before his memory evaporates. One day when he was still a kid, he came home to his drunkard father passed out on the floor in front of his frightened mother and older sister. He slept on his favorite white shoes. As he tried to move the shoes, his father woke up and beat him mercilessly. He had enough of his father, who was abusing the family, so he killed him. It was his first blood that brought peace to his home. That was when he realized that necessary murder exists in the world. So he continued to kill after that day. A merchant that beats his family every day, a person who abuses animals, an alcoholic bum who molests runaways girls, he starts his cleansing by killing everyone he thinks better off dead. Most of the human trash he collected is buried in the bamboo grove he owns. byung Soo lives in the city as the local veterinarian. Although his memories are deteriorating, the muscle memories he gets from years of experience as a veterinarian still exist. But his dementia made him overdose a client's cat, which is the last straw before he closes down his clinic. To keep his brain running, byung Soo joins a poetry class. Everyone praises his poetry on the murder that sounds so realistic and original. yeon Ju, a woman from the class, develops a crush on him. It irritates him, so he does his best to drive her away. It annoys him so much that he would kill her if he were still his old self. byung Soo goes to the bamboo grove to cool his head down and contemplate his situation. It has been 17 years since the last time he killed a person. It was a woman, but he couldn't remember who she was or why he killed her. After he buried her in the bamboo grove, he got into a car accident on the way home. That accident must have caused his problem now. Raising children is more challenging than killing 10 people, so he decided to stop killing and focus on raising Uni. Meanwhile, in an unknown location, another girl has been kidnapped. The serial killer is still actively hunting in the area. byung Soo then goes back home after spending some time at the bamboo grove. The foggy road makes it hard to see other cars, and when he gets distracted by the audio recorder, he hits a car from behind. He gets out and notices blood flowing from a bag inside the car. He instinctively gets a cloth and gets the blood sample. The vehicle owner gets out and tells him it's only deer that he hunted. Since the accident is his fault, byung Soo offers the man to cover the repair cost and exchange business cards. But the man declines the offer and tells him not to worry. Even after byung Soo insisted on exchanging business cards, he is still unwilling to give byung Soo his card. As the man drives away, byung Soo uses the audio recorder to record the incident details so he doesn't forget. Because from his experience, he is sure that the man is a killer. Back at his clinic, he tests the blood sample he got. 
As suspected, it's not animal blood. When two serial killers meet, they can identify each other. That makes Byung Su wonder whether the man recognizes him too. He then surfed the internet to look for more information about the recent killing. It makes him worried as all of the victims are young women, which means his daughter is in danger. The murders have the same modus operandi, making him sure that a serial killer is on a hunt. He decides to call the police anonymously to give them a tip about the killer and give them the license plate of the car he hit. The police run the license plate and find the owner of the vehicle. He is Mean, a fellow police officer at the local police station. But instead of arresting him or investigating further, the police make fun of the anonymous tip. Back at home, byung Su is cooking his meal when suddenly he gets a call. It's from the police telling him that the problem has been solved and it's only a misunderstanding. byung Su wonders how the police got his number when he called him anonymously. That's when he realized that Mean is aware of him too now. Byung Su then tries to investigate the matter further by himself. Where was Mean heading when the accident occurred? As Byung Su is also an ex serial killer, he can figure out the way Mean thinks easily. He goes to a nearby reservoir, and as he expected, he finds a woman's dead body in a bag. Once again, he gives an anonymous tip to the police about the body location. This matter catches Mean's attention. Later, Uni and her friends notice Mean standing in front of her dad's clinic. She tells him to bring the cat to the clinic in the city because her dad has already closed down the clinic. It's their first encounter, which is the start of byung Su's nightmare. byung Su still doesn't know the identity of the man. But it turns out that the chief of the local police is his old friend. He asks him to run the license plate number for him. At night, Uni walks alone on the street when Min passes by and offers him a ride. At home, byung Su is worried because Uni is still not back home. When a woman passes by his house, his old habit kicks in, and he strangles her instinctively. When he realizes it's his own daughter, he stops. He realizes that his disease has developed faster than he thought. He can't trust his own mind now, which makes him wonder whether the crash he had with Mean is only his hallucination. And more importantly, whether the recent killing is his doing. He then goes to a nearby nunnery to meet his older sister, who is a nun now. He tells her about his situation and goes to the poetry after feeling relieved. Yeonju still tries to get his attention. This time she pushes harder than before and forces him to give her a ride. On the way, he sees Uni walking with a man. It turns out that Uni is dating Min now. Min introduces himself to him as byung Su tries to remember who he is. byung Su's disease is blocking his memory, making him unable to remember Min. Yeonju forces him to leave the young couple alone and drives away. Not long after, he forgets who she is too and drops her on the side of the road. He then records the information about Unis boyfriend to the audio recorder so he will not forget. byung Su then hangs out with the police chief. He tells him the car owner's identity he requested before, who is no other than Mean. The dementia kicks in again as he doesn't understand what his friend is talking about. After listening to his audio recorder, he starts to remember it piece by piece and realizes that his daughter is in danger. He immediately calls her and heads to the movie. Once he gets there, he tries to find her. But not long after that, he forgets what he is looking for and ends up enjoying the movie instead. He sits in the movies for a while before he remembers what he was there for. When he gets back, he finds Uni already home. Byung Su tries to tell her about his misgivings with Min but realizes that Min had preemptively discussed Byung Su's suspicious activities around the bamboo grove with her. He thinks about his next move carefully to counter Min's plan. He goes to his police chief friend and gives him the blood sample he gets from the accident. He agrees to check the blood and return the result in seven days. Meanwhile, Min visits Uni more often at her work. Byung Su picks her up from her work and forbids her to meet Mean for the next seven days. He warns Mean about it too and directly confronts him about the killing. Now that he has already declared his war on Mean, he exercises his body to prepare for a probable upcoming fight. From that day, he will personally take Uni to her workplace then picks her up when she's done. To make sure Mean doesn't do anything, he tails him everywhere too. Suppressing his self-doubts, he is determined to kill Mean, but his failing mind and body betray him. 
he starts experiencing hallucinations, and a whole week's worth of memory entirely evaporates. Seven days have passed, and the chief of police gives him the blood result, which comes out to be animal blood. He contemplates the situation alone as he can't make sense of the problem when his older sister comes to soothe him. That night, he wakes up in the middle of the night to find himself tied up in his bedroom while Mean reading and editing his memoir. Mean admits to swapping the blood sample and threatens to kill Uni unless byung soo takes the blame for Mean's crimes. byung soo tries to grab his bag for a weapon but fails and spills its contents onto the floor, and then Mean tranquilizes him. In the morning, he wakes up and only vaguely remembers what happened. He rushes to Uni's room to check on her. He then tells her to stay in the nunnery with her aunt for a while. After sending them off in a taxi, byung soo tails Mean again. This time, he follows him to an abandoned building where he finds footage of Yeonju being held hostage. When he presents this evidence to the police, they suspect byung soo himself is responsible. Min tells them that he can't reach Uni too recently, which makes him more suspicious. Upon trying to call his sister to prove Uni's safety, he can't find her number. That's when he recalls that his sister committed suicide shortly after byung soo killed their father. He flees, and the police begin digging up the bamboo grove, finding the bodies of byung soos past victims, as well as Yeonju. So once again, is it really his Alzheimer making him believe that Min is the killer while he is the real one? At home, he recalls who his final victim was 17 years ago, his unfaithful wife. Before killing her, he learned that Uni was not his biological daughter. Arriving home after the car crash, he almost killed Uni, but his injury caused him to forget the events surrounding his last kill. Recalling the recent incident, he becomes convinced that he might have killed his daughter too in a fit of insanity. The guilt-ridden byung soo prepares to kill himself as he listens to Uni's voice on his recorder. However, he then hears Mean confessing his crimes. During their earlier confrontation, he accidentally hit the record button. He then realizes that he sent Uni away in Mean's car, not a taxi as he remembered. Renewed with faith, byung soo calls his police friend and plays the recording, convincing him that Mean is the killer. He follows Mean to a cabin in the woods where Uni is. Mean strangles him and ties up Uni after she sees the body. While Mean is monologuing about his life at the cabin, Mean reveals a scar related to his past. Uni sneaks out of the room, prompting Mean to go outside in his car and look for her. Arriving at the cabin, byung soo sees him and crashes his car into Mean. After entering the cabin, byung soos condition triggers again, completely banking out his memory. Mean, laughing with disbelief, begins to strangle him. Uni's call brings back his memory, and he starts fighting back. With her help, he eventually overpowers and kills Mean. Having learned from Mean earlier that her mother's body was found in the bamboo grove, Uni is terrified of her father. byung soo admits to his crimes and assures Uni that she is not a murderer's daughter, as they are not blood-related. He is subsequently incarcerated and processed into an internment facility. Listening to her father's last recording, Uni learns that he keeps himself alive only for her. Deciding to forgive her father, Uni visits him, whose memory has deteriorated even further. She cuts his hair and gives him a new pair of white shoes. Later, byung soo decides to kill himself, but his symptoms manifest again before he can commit suicide. He remembers that his memory can't be trusted. The movie ends with him standing outside a train tunnel. He holds up his daughter's locket with the photo of Mean inside and thinks to himself, do not trust your memory, Mean is still alive. What do you think? Is Mean still alive? Is his daughter still in danger? Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and see you, next time.